Entonces, como decía Alejandro, para darle continuidad. Well, as Alejandro was saying, to continue with this forum, we have this panel about a blueprint of Africa, proposals from below. We have as panelists, comrades Pocaca Oñago and Joyce Bambul. So we will, have, uh, Joyce will speak first. Joyce, you there? Adelante. Go ahead, Joyce. Oh, hello. I'm Joyce. Uh, I'm Joyce Jason Boy from Kenya, Africa, uh, living in, in Nairobi and near the largest dam site in Kenya, which is the Ndora dam site. And so many things, uh, it has affected us environmentally. It has affected us in poverty, in exploitation and Hello. One, one minute, Joyce. Las traducciones están muteadas en inglés y español. Ah. Joyce. Joyce, Joyce, you there? Pede, podes comunicarte con la compañera? Estamos solucionando un problema. Joyce, can you can you hear us? Are you there? Les pedimos un poquito de paciencia, compañero. Tienen que saber que la condición, las condiciones técnicas donde se encuentran los compañeros no son las mejores y por lo tanto es complejo. As for a bit of patience, because the conditions of communication with where the comrades are are very complicated. As for a bit of patience to resolve 
these issues? Podemos continuar entonces con el, mientras recuperamos la, la comunicación. ¿Por qué no continuamos con While we recover the communication with Joyce, we could continue. Comrade Ojaka. We can continue with, with you in the meantime. Yeah, no problem. Uh, can you hear me? I hope the, the sound is good. Yes, yes, all, yes. All right then. Uh, first of all, I'd love to thank uh, International Socialist League for giving us uh, this chance to actually co-hosting this conversation and this important uh, discussion on climate ch uh, change. And I also thank them for also extending the invite to Revolutionary Socialist League in Africa so that we can also come and participate and give our reflections with regards to uh, planet colonialism that continues today in the name of capitalism. I also bring my revolutionary greetings from our organization's leaders and members, and you are happy to be here and join with the global community in terms of moving the society forward. So I, I'd like to turn off uh, the, the video so that uh, the, internet, uh, the, 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 the internet connection can be a bit stable. So I hope there's no problem with that. Are you guys okay? Is it okay if I just turn good, off uh, good. the video? Okay, okay. So the not a good history with us here in Africa. We experienced uh, 500 years of our people, land of our resources. Other than that, for us, we experienced 67 years of colonialism and uh, British rule. Uh, and now we are undergoing. Uh, we have been undergoing an which has seen a lot of consumerism, which has and a lot of workers' exploitation, the implementation of liberal policies that come from neocolonialism. Since uh, even after we got an election, nothing much has changed, and uh, we continue experiencing the same conditions that were there even three days ago. And uh, that is how this has been affecting capitalism. This capitalism has been going off the backs of Africans. Uh, Variant uh, that the first revolution of 18 uh, up in uh, late of uh, 2000, maybe uh, trying to cut the global temperature to uh, one to five degrees. And uh, we looking at the current studies that have been conducted, increase. 1. Ohaka, comrade, we're not we're not hearing you. Your your audio has has cut off. No se escucha el español, Federico. No se escucha. La traducción no se escucha. Oh, can you hear me now? Is it okay? Since since you turned off the video, is we can hardly hear the the audio. Uh, what about what about now? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you now. But you should you should start you should start again where where you left off when you had turned off the video. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So uh, I was trying to historicize the the ravages that come with capitalism 
And uh, what is it that was discussed? Capitalism is a history of us because it has been growing off the backs of Africans uh, since its inception. When you look at the Industrial Revolution that took place in 1850 uh, up to date, uh, I think the early studies show that uh, at around the uh, early 2000, the global temperatures rose to 1.5 degrees. And it's now expected that two decades will be experiencing another 1.5 degrees uh, increase in temperatures. Uh, I, I, hope, I hope before I start crunching up the numbers, uh, you guys can actually hear me well. Is, is, uh, Am I audible enough? Yeah, yeah, yes. Yes, we hear you okay, so, but... But? Okay. Try not, not to evolution move so with, much. Okay, okay. So with the industrial revolution is that... Uh, uh, we, we, we saw a lot of pollution taking place uh, in places where uh, the industries were located. And we also saw the subjugation of, uh, of, of women and also the use of child labor in actually um, uh, bringing capitalism to being. Uh, the, I'd love to say that uh, the same conditions as much as they, are, they don't kind of exist in Europe right now, uh, they've been shifted and uh, Take, uh, and, and uh, actually exported. They've been exported back to Africa uh, and uh, largely to many parts of the global uh, global south, where we see the same same industries that were there in the, in the in the UK. When we see Kalmax writing and uh, kind of uh, angels also chipping in on his book uh, or uh, the you know, the capitalist manifesto, there's a lot of use of Long working hours, tendencies of uh, the industrial uh, uh, that uh, was draining off resources uh, from 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 all continents. So, uh, industries that continue to pollute uh, our environment largely for uh, trying to create uh, goods for consumption uh, in Europe and the uh, uh, United States. We kind of uh, have the facts that as of today and as of now accounts for 3% of global emissions. And taking place and uh, the ravages taking effect, the bushfires, uh, the, 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 the big floods and uh, the, 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 the heat waves that keep on pounding on our kids, on our, on, our, on our people who are even less equipped to deal with these climate changes uh, are, 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 the, are the worst affected. Mostly from Africa, only one of the global carbon emissions that are there. You see? But yeah give out the, the, the labor and the resources out of our continent for consumption. Uh, we also see that uh, ten, 10 of the most uh, food insecure countries accounting for 0.8% uh, of the global uh, carbon emission. And uh, Comrade, Okaka, when, when, you, yes. when, you move, when you move forward, when you move your face forward, it, the sound cuts off. You need to stay back where you, without moving forward, and I can hear you fine. When you move your face forward, it, it cuts off. Okay. Can you hear me now? I hope I'm good. Yes. Is yes. it okay? Yes, Okaka. Yes. Okay. So like I was saying, uh, 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 10 of the most food insecure countries uh, in Africa account for less than 0.08% of the global carbon emissions. And yet, uh, 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 when you when you look uh, uh, in particular like a country, uh, uh, for example, Burundi, would, would account like uh, 500 Burundians uh, generate the same amount of uh, carbon emission as a single American uh, generates in a single a single in a single particular moment. So this this shows the kind of veracity that uh, 
Africa is bearing the brunt of the environment pollution as it is. But then when you look back and on how they benefit for it, it, it actually, there's little that we can do in terms of actually mitigating and also kind of having those kind of uh, uh, social safety nets to actually shield ourselves from the environmental exploitation. Uh, Africa actually contributes uh, less coal emissions and uh, we have less, uh, we can still have less uh, equipment to deal with this carbon, uh, uh, carbon, carbon uh, climate change that keeps on uh, ravaging our homes and our villages. Uh, meaning that uh, the most vulnerable and still we are the most affected by this uh, climate change. Uh, we look at the first fashion that takes place, uh, for example, in Europe today and uh, part of the global north. For instance, uh, it is said that uh, Americans uh, buy at least a cloth, five, uh, buy new clothes daily, like uh, five times uh, uh, in, in a week. But uh, where, the, where do these uh, clothes come from? They come largely from the global south because when you look at the farms where the, uh, some of these uh, cottons are reared, where when you look at the when you look at the workforce that uh, takes to implement kind of uh, produce some of these uh, cloth clothing, they come from they come from us. We are the ones who are exploited who carry the, uh, on our backs the heavy load of producing uh, fast fashion that the Europe uh, lavishes and they kind of uh, enjoy uh, in 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 taking uh, 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 as a luxury, but when when they are done with these clothes, when they when 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 they fill their their homes with these clothes and they want to dispose of them, we find again instead of them uh, creating uh, necessary uh, necessary measures in, uh, to kind of mitigate on how they can recycle some of these clothes, they actually packed back again and they are resold back to Africa as uh, as as secondhand clothes. So what happens? We see a lot of we see a lot of uh, pollution taking place in our rivers. We have a lot of linen that uh, are, are, are piling up in our, in our rivers, clogging the waste, uh, uh, completely destroying the habitat that uh, we, we, we used to enjoy uh, some time back then. We, we no longer have fishes in our rivers. We no longer see uh, have, have the trees that used to grow in some of these, uh, all, all because we see linen uh, that uh, are wastes uh, being deposited directly in our in our in, in our rivers, and they go to eat, and they go and clog our lakes, and some are actually deposited into the sea. So, capitalism itself, with its consumerism tendencies and its extraction, continues to oh, by the day uh, kill and and stifle uh, uh, the entire population in the world. Also, that, that we see that there's been uh, an increase. There's been an increase in the systems that uh, continue pounding our people, not only not only in Africa, but uh, some places in Latin America, India, and the other countries in the global south. Um, in, in the 1960s, when the climate change was taking place, uh, we, we used to see, we used to record like uh, uh, very low instances of heat waves hitting, hitting, hitting the region. And uh, it was estimated that uh, children who were born in around that period in their lifetime they experienced that at least uh, at least like uh, ten heat waves in their in their lifetime. But uh, with the current generation that's cropping up, with our generation that uh, exists now, uh, from it's estimated that uh, some of these heat waves will be experienced uh, like thirty times more in our lifetime, even as our kids, uh, as our, as our children continue to grow and uh, and. Uh, and become adults as a, the generation continues 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 to come to fall we see we see a lot of uh, drought a lot of famine a lot of uh, environmental degradation in terms of the mines that are, are, are always being used uh, to, to 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 seek resources so that uh, the, the the industries in the in the global north can continue to produce the forms that you use to produce uh, the the, the foodstuffs that you use, for example, when you see colonialism coming to Africa, 
we were forced upon some of the cash crops that we were not used to growing. Uh, the, the, the fact that they, they, they go around telling people that they found Africans being inferior and unable to actually kind of produce anything substantive. But that's a very big lie. With the Afro, uh, Afro, 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 Afro farming that uh, they found here, our soils were very stable. They were very rich and they were growing energy giving foods. And if you look at how the performance of the uh, African families then were and how we are right now, uh, we are far much worse than uh, our, uh, our ancestors in terms of uh, uh, how they used to live and the kind of uh, life they used to enjoy. So we are forced upon, for example, Kenya was colonized by the British. So they forced upon, uh, upon us coffee, which we don't consume at all. They forced upon us sisal, they forced upon us a lot of uh, cotton, some of the stuff that we really used not, not to produce. And in implementing some of these uh, uh, colonial policies of, uh, of uh, uh, agrarian uh, uh, industrial complex, you see that uh, a lot of forests were cut down so that they could actually plant some of these food crops. Because the capitalist market of the uh, United Kingdom uh, uh, requested for it. They, come, they came and took uh, some of the uh, richness that we had in terms of uh, uh, the animals that, we, that, 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 uh, that, that were so natural to us and we were living together with them. So they went on uh, adventurous expeditions of shooting and killing and uh, plundering the natural resources that were existed in Africa. The huge trees that were indigenous to us they cut most of it and uh, ship them away uh, to actually uh, feed the, industri the industries of the global north. So what are, what, what, are we, uh, what, what are we left with? We were left with what uh, they used to uh, tell us uh, uh, are forms of development, but they generate nothing exactly uh, for the African uh, person here at home. For example, the railways that they built, it was built under the back breaking labor of the African people. And uh, they were basically built to actually extract resources from Africa. Uh, they were built actually to kind of plunder the little uh, livelihood that, and, 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 and the cultural norms that Africans had because with it came uh, Christianity, with it uh, came the European way of, 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 of wearing uh, and uh, kind of uh, social, uh, social, social life. So the, we, we, find, we, we, find a situation, we, are, we, are, we find ourselves in a situation where we are the most underdeveloped countries in Africa because the infrastructure that was set up was not set up to actually benefit us, but it was set up to actually extract uh, uh, resources and extract people, labor uh, for, 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 for the industrial, uh, for, the, for the industries uh, of capitalism in, in, the, in the monopolies of the powers that be today. And the same continues going on as we look deep into the Congo. What are they doing there? We see mining companies, huge mining companies like, uh, I, 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 I'll not mention the, the companies per se, but I know the countries that are involved are very much uh, uh, are very much also involved in countries in in other spaces like uh, the Latin America, for instance, Canada. Seven uh, more than more, more than uh, they call they, they commit more than seven uh, uh, seventy percent of the mining of the mining industries uh, that take away resources in Africa. We see we see them fighting for the cobalt that there is, and now they are pushing also these agendas on uh, electric cars. They are, they are lying to us about these things around uh, solar panels and uh, wind energy. Yes, they, they might be renewable in the, in the short term, but the long run, they're very devastating because when you use wind power, when you use solar power, when you use those electric cars, they use batteries. The lead that comes from the batteries and the cobalt that are used to actually uh, spin some of these machines are mined from Africa. And how are they mined? They use child labor. They use, the, there's, there's also patriarchal issues around the use of women in 
in in uh, in contract debts that uh, usually occur in some of these mines because they they are not given any protective gears, they are not uh, given uh, good working conditions, they are left to by their own means to whatever a power that be to actually kind of control the markets and uh, the mines that uh, these people work on. And that's why you'll always see Africa is at war. It's at war with itself because people are always rushing and the, and the global north is usually the, uh, uh, the first people to actually hand over the, the guns uh, and the, the weapons to for people to continue fighting for the little uh, scraps that they, they leave them with uh, in, uh, the, that they call development. So these are some of the uh, uh, diversities that we experience here in Africa. And uh, it's, it's very shameful. It's completely shameful that uh, we see uh, people running, uh, multinationals running to uh, to, to, to these same, same uh, metropolis states uh, signing accords telling us that uh, they want to reinvest some of the uh, resources that they have in terms of uh, 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 reforestation so that we can get carbon credits. We can get uh, carbon credits out of the pollution that they contribute to the world. Uh, for example, uh, the US military uh, uh, produces 70% of the global carbon emissions per year as compared to uh, uh, the rest of all other all other countries. So you can imagine the use of fossil fuels that they continue uh, plundering and they continue using for for the to call themselves the superpowers of the world uh, ends up ends ends up actually dominating and uh, putting our people who a lot of subjugation because the military industrial complex is widespread al along Africa. It's hard to actually pinpoint a place where there is no uh, the military interference in terms of bringing coup in places where uh, uh, the left seems to be winning elections or uh, the left uh, seems to be kind of putting forward policies that are for for the people. So it is upon us that uh, we call out these accords for what they are because no multinationals will actually ever kind of uh, bring any change for us. And in short, what they are, uh, they are telling Africa is this, eh? maintain pollution for us. Let us continue polluting the environment and then we'll pay you for it in terms of carbon credits and uh, the kind of trees uh, you will be setting up. So uh, it's a speed to our faces that uh, these people are okay with continuing and exploiting our resources and continue using fossil fuel to uh, to increase uh, global temperatures, but then uh, tell us that uh, we, our only duty for us also not to develop will be just to sit back and maintain pollution for them. So we continue maintaining pollution. What a sick joke. What? So revolutionaries don't walk around uh, saying that uh, they are fighting climate justice with, uh, with the Teslas. Teslas will not give us uh, will, will, will not uh, uh, bring us to the net zero, uh, that the, the uh, carbon credit that they keep on going around with telling us that uh, uh, it is the future. That's not the future. In fact, uh, that's not the definition of the future. What we also see, we also, uh, we also want to call out is the use of uh, charity in as, 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 as a way of fighting uh, climate change. We've seen, Monsanto, in terms of what they do, uh, they've been coming the GMO products to Africa and telling us that uh, some of these things are safe to actually use and eat and uh, produce. But uh, it's bad for the peasants and the farmers back here home. We can tell you for sure some of these food stuff that they created in the laboratory are way too inferior. Uh, as compared to the kind of seeds and the kind of food that we used to produce ourselves even before the Europeans came to Africa. How? The GMO food that are uh, being spread here by the Monsanto family, I understand now Monsanto has been bought by Bayer, uh, puts our peasants and farmers to constant subjugation of always buying the seeds. 
the seeds that Africa used to produce was self-regenerating. Like if we harvest uh, today, I put aside a few seeds for the next season. So what, what, what happens? Every time I always have something that I know come next season, I'll be planting this food, I'll be planting this seed and it will be generating, uh, uh, it will be self-regenerating and sustainable for me. But the, the, the GMO products that come uh, uh, from Monsanto are a one-time use only, and then they are licensed. So like I cannot, I cannot from someone and go and plant it myself because I'll be sued for using those, those seeds. I'll be, I'll be sued for using that kind of plant. The other thing is that these seeds, uh, when they mature and you harvest them, you cannot use them again. Why? They come with a lot of uh, backlash. They use a lot of fertilizer, which are not organic. The same fertilizer that are actually produced um, selling, uh, selling us these seeds. Uh, they destroy the soil component of the land. So any other food I try to plant again in that soil will not actually grow. So I'll have to go back again to the shop to buy a fertilizer so that I can grow on my farm. But before we didn't use to go to shop to buy seeds and buy fertilizers. But you see, with the, with, with the current with the, with the current alienation of also food sovereignty, we find ourselves in a constant cycle of going back to the shops to buy food to buy seeds, to buy water, to feed ourselves. And these are things that were naturally given to us. And we used to enjoy them without, with, without restrictions. So the fruits that are, uh, that are produced are seedless. The fruits that come right now are seedless. And these seedless fruits, you cannot actually, you cannot actually take out any kind of seed and plant them back in a way that you can actually kind of be it being sustainable for us. So what happens? We are forced again to go back to the shop and buy and don't have that good purchasing power because our peasants in, in our farms back at home already were, were already with the, uh, with the current capital, capitalist crisis. Uh, they have been dropped off land. They have been dropped off water. And they've been dropped off any particular cultural or social uh, way of living that they used to they used to enjoy in the past. So what are we left with? We are seeing a lot of climate refugees uh, uh, escaping their homelands, going to look for greener pastures where? In the global north. That's why you'll always see people dying in ships trying to cross over to Europe. That's why we will see people uh, 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 having constant war and uh, people fleeing their homes so that they can go and get arable farming lands elsewhere, especially in the global north, because back here at home, it's not, it's not, it's, it's no longer, it's no longer, it's no longer sustainable. People cannot, cannot live off the land. People cannot live off any kind of uh, uh, cultural means that they used to enjoy in the past. So the neoliberal, the neoliberal policies also uh, that have been put on us uh, uh, continue to stifle the the, the 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 poor people, the the oppressed people, and uh, with it we see a resurgence of a lot of climate uh, migration taking place. And uh, as of course as we have seen and we continue to see, uh, a capital, a capitalism capitalism doesn't know well uh, how to react to some of this crisis. For example, we saw Donald Trump putting a very huge fence in America so to bar people who are in Mexico from coming and migrating to, uh, to America. So these are some of the things that they do to us. They put up huge fences. Some of them are, some of, some of these fences that uh, are, I'd say have been built also in Africa here. We see them in Libya. We've seen them in some parts of Algeria, I think. And uh, they are being built not by these countries, but by the same countries that are major contributors to these people migrating. Uh, France, Italy, Un United Kingdom, Germany, major polluters, major destroyers of the environment, and still yet they deny people the, 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 the right to actually move and resettle in areas that they feel are a bit conducive and safe for them. So some of these policies that they put in place where they force upon us to 
kind of depreciate also our currencies so uh, to allow in a lot of import coming from some of these uh, capitalist metropolis like Japan um uh, where we 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 find ourselves consuming a lot of el el electronic waste in the name of uh, second hand goods and end up in our dam sites affecting our kids affecting affecting our environment af affecting our whole habitat in terms of the birds that we used to see and 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 all that and all that good life that we used to enjoy so capitalism in itself is uh, has failed has failed to actually uh, solve uh, its own crisis and uh, speaking about a crisis uh, we 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 also look upon ourselves the the issues that come around in terms of the use of plastic waste we, a lot of plastic is being generated and we understand plastic comes from uh, fossil, the use of fossil fuel the same same fossil fuel that uh, they, are, they, they, they struggle so hard to, uh, to siphon out of the global south, uh, for example, Nigeria. At the same, same way, they use the plastics to actually dump them back in Africa. So uh, we, see, we see them uh, destroying the environment completely, even the oceans in terms of extracting some of these uh, natural resources. Um, there's, a, there, there, there was a, there's a report I was going through that says the the, the, the exporting the, the 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 oil companies that are mining offshore in the in, in Europe uh, in the past decade had only experienced uh, uh, ten instances where there was uh, oil spillage into the sea. But uh, you look back to Africa and uh, especially Nigeria, where the same company which is Exxon, again from Canada. Uh, extracting oil uh, from our, from from off off our, off the coast of Africa, they within the same decade they, they experienced more than nine thousand uh, oil spillages that went completely to devastate the 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 natural habitat uh, and the way of living of the people of, of the African coast. How these spillages uh, uh, kill kill the kill 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 the fishes. That uh, these these uh, that that these uh, fisher folk uh, depend on, their way of life is altered because they are now forced to look on ways on how to actually sustain their families when uh, their communities are uh, completely uh, uh, fishing families. So some of these uh, some of these reports never really reach the mainstream media but these are some of the uh, uh, traversies that take place in africa coca cola for instance produces a lot of plastics but we see them piling themselves uh, piling some of these waste here the use of single use plastic has been one of the major contributors to uh, pollution in africa because they clog everything they clog the sewer lines they clog the rivers they they, they are burned, they, 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 they clog the air, and affording the simple, uh, uh, simple, uh, simple living conditions that are required for the average human being become completely unbearable. So the only solution we, we find ourselves that uh, is usually, is, is actually the best way to actually mitigate some of these traverses actually to completely not use plastics. You don't want plastics. You don't want the use of fossil fuels because you're not using it before. And right now, as it is, the developing countries continue to grow, continue to increase their GDP because capitalism is obsessed with consuming. It's obsessed with growing. It's obsessed And yet, those of us who contribute some of these resources in the growing of these capital states never develop. We never get anything out of it. Actually, what we experience is nothing other than just oppression. You see? So with that uh, being said, uh, maybe uh, my last point would be on the issue of charity and the foundations that go around uh, uh, telling, tell, uh, whitewashing, uh, I'd say greenwashing actually, themselves that they participate in uh, in in uh, in green energy they participate in ensuring that Africans enjoy a comfortable and good lifestyle 
are uh, uh, it's a complete joke it's a complete lie there's nothing that comes out of it because what happens is that we find that uh, in fundraise in, in in having these fundraisers in having these uh, foundations in having these charities they 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 give us a drop of the of of the wealth that they 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 actually uh, consume themselves that, and they they actually accumulated they give us a portion of the accumulation of a very minute a very minute contribution of what actually they've accumulated from us then even in that small with that small charity that they've offered a lot of it is used in exploiting the people in terms of growing back their industries i'll give a good example that took place in 2014 in Kenya uh the Melina Gates Foundation came to Kenya saying that they were teaching farmer uh, 50,000 farmers uh, to actually uh, practice good farming habits but what they ended up doing uh, was that uh, they ha they had shares uh, they took more shares in coca cola they had 585 million dollars in coca cola shares so the 50,000 farmers that they were training back home he actually practice good farming habits ended up being to actually uh, forgo the energy food that they were growing in their farms and actually plant passion fruits and what uh, by extent happened was that the passion fruits that these farmers were producing were ended up putting them in a lot of obligation in terms of working again for coca cola uh for so that they can actually produce this uh, uh passion juice uh, fanta that they propel around telling people that uh, it's part of innovation uh, uh, in terms of whatever it is that that they're doing so we also rebuild these charities they're not leading us anywhere and they're just there to actually kind of give a good image to some of these billionaires who have actually uh, grown rich out of exploiting workers out of subjugating, subjugating uh, people's resources and now they are walking around notioning people that they are practicing they are, they, are, they are giving back the wealth to the to the poor i really don't i really don't know what to say about that it it's very disheartening that uh, people can actually find it amusing that uh, using people in such a manner and giving them back uh, whatever it is the the scraps that they call uh, charity is is part of contributing uh, and uh, having goodwill uh, in terms of uh, moving the society forward so like i said revolutionaries don't move around fighting climate change with teslas or having these uh, whatever it is the the oil that they produce that uh, they say uh, the industry is considered the best putting in habits in terms of mitigating environmental change uh these are recyclable these are whatever it is they they keep on propelling to us so maybe as i close i'd like to say that uh, there is no doubt that uh, imperialism and settler colonialism that we continue to experience since until now we, we have uh, since we got our, uh, we we got independence we've not been given our lands back they're still held by the super rich and the black colonialists walk around calling themselves our leaders actually they are misleaders no, let me not call them leaders and uh, need to be wiped out uh, from the face of the earth because if they don't uh, we don't do it uh, sooner probably will go down with them and uh, being uh, having our team today justice uh, it resonates well with the, why we need to continue organizing why we need to continue agitating why we need to continue mobilizing to universal unity with regards to total liberation of the shackles of capitalism we also need to break free um, from the year, from the yokes of neocolonialism and the neoliberalism that uh, perpetuates itself under the new uh, banner of uh, late stage capitalism and this makes me reiterate uh, uh, perhaps the humble words of amilcar cabral Uh, during their tricontinental con conference uh, in uh, in, uh, in in asia where he, he talks uh, when your house uh, is burning it's no use uh, to beat the drums apparently we from the left have been beat with drums and our house is on fire perhaps it's time that we take action and we start moving this society forward 
away from capitalist exploitation. And that's for me today, perhaps maybe if there is any question, I'm open, uh, we can continue the conversation. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Okaka. Eh, ahora va a seguir en uso de la palabra la camarada Joyce. Thank you, Okaka. Now, Joyce Wambui will speak next. Joyce? Joyce, you there? Hello. Hello. Yeah. Oh, once again. Thank you. My phone had some hiccups, but we're back. Great to be here. And yeah, uh, today we're going to talk about uh, the biggest dump site in Kenya and how capitalism has affected us, especially due to its nature of pollution of pollution and the area around it. Uh, we have Dandora and Korogocho being among the, uh, the slums in Kenya and colonialism, uh, sorry, sorry, capitalism has affected us because the biggest dam site here in Kenya pollutes every day in uh, 850 tons daily. According to the research that was that was done just recently, stating that the the life, the lifeline of a person who is born and raised in Kurogocho or Dandora cannot live up to 40 years. The life expectancy is, is 40 years. And when the life expectancy is 40 years, it means that this person is affected by this pollution. So many cases of sickness, the coughings, uh, the, the coughings, the childhood cancers, the cognitive impairments, cholera. We have this hazardous smoke, smoke every day at around since 11 p.m because of the waste of the, the burnt waste, thereby affecting everyone around here, such that every single day, so many chemists, so many hospitals are coming up. It has become a business. People are using, people are using this, uh, these chances of opening up businesses and the businesses that are most Instead of schools, we have chemists because people cannot even afford a good hospital. Every single day, they're just self-medicating with, with drugs, thereby affecting the body. When you're used to, when they're used to self-medicating and not knowing where the problem is, when you feel like you, you have some you have a, some chest pain, you just go to the drugstore. You, you are coughing today, you go to the drugstore, uh, you have some, you, you're feeling dizzy because of the smoke, you go to the drugstore, what happens to your body? The body becomes used to the drugs thereby, even though you'll go to a better hospital, which not so many people can afford it. By the time you're being diagnosed with something like cancer, you cannot, honestly, you cannot change. Your body is so used to the medication that it cannot help you anymore. And every, every single day, what happens to the people that have privatized this company, these companies that have privatized uh, about this dump site, they are gangs, the cartels that they do not want it moved, yet every single day it affects the people here. The, the rich are just continuing to make money while the people that are living around here are going to be affected every single day of their lives. And the children, it is 
the poverty is so severe such that the kids do not want to go to school because they want to go to the dam site and collect uh, some plastic so that they can go get some money. People, it is so severe such that the people that are living around here cannot be able to facilitate most of them, the school fees. Uh, you get that so many of them, people have dropped out of school. Uh, menstrual problem has also become a menstrual poverty, creating menstrual poverty. This food, nobody can afford. A family of five cannot feed themselves. So they have to choose that this will go to school and some of them will have to drop out and go to the dam site, collect some plastics, collect some food. People collect food, people collect so many things, anything that can give them a shilling. Uh, they, they are always going there. So it makes the poverty level to still remain because so many, because the people that are supposed to go study, have a life, do something better, get themselves out of this misery, cannot even afford to feed themselves such that the higher percentage keeps, keeps uh, on the same, same level instead of, instead of growing. And the waste, uh, it has affected our waters. Every time it has contaminated our water, it has polluted our environment. It has polluted the soil such that you, you cannot grow anything in this area. But uh, the good thing is that the RSL, for, through political education, we, we, have, uh, we have this called Wangare Matai Cell, and we are educating people, we are educating the community through political education. We are trying to show them how uh, this community, capitalism has, it has affected their lives, how communism and socialism can help us grow out of this. How we're supposed to tell the government, the government is one body and we, we are the body. How we as the people have the power to change this and so that the government can listen to us, so that the capitalists can, we can break from this bondage. And every single day we, we have these political classes. Uh, we have, we, we also go to the schools. We are also teaching children that they're supposed to, through ecological, through ecolog ecological uh, a collective organizing, uh, we are teaching students that they are, since the dam site has already affected our bodies, what can we do to change this? What can we do uh, to clean this air? What can we do to reduce the number of hospitals, to reduce the number of uh, drugstores coming up, to reduce the number of uh, children getting sick, to reduce the number of these poverty levels? What can we do? Uh, as What can we do? through this collective, through this cell, through this uh, comradeship, through this organizing. So we, we, we have come up with, with a group, uh, it's a, called Ecological Justice. And we, there's this collective of planting bamboos around uh, the dumping, the dump site area, around the areas in Dandora and Korogoto, which surround the dump site so that we can clean out this air so that the children that are going to be born in future can have a safer environment. The rivers, through the river banks, uh, through this bamboo planting, that they can, uh, they can, they can, they can clean our waters, they can clean our environment. And socialism, should be accepted. Socialism is going to help us through this.
Joyce, you're you're muted. You hit the mute button. Sorry, you have muted your mic. Sorry. Hey. Hello. Uh, yes, yes. We can hear you. Go. Okay. And. Joyce, we, we can't uh, we can't hear you. There's there's no audio. We cannot hear you. Hello, Joyce. Uh, you we lost you again. Can you hear us? Uh, we might have lost her. Let me contact her privately, see if, what, if, if I can get her. Ahí dice Ezra que va a intentar conectarse con Joyce. Yes, Ezra is saying he's going to try to contact Joyce. Ezra is another comrade from Kenya. I, uh... I think our internet is bad, yes. So uh, I don't know if we can move on. So so, so as to save time because we yeah. Por qué no continuamos con Ezra entonces? Ezra, we can continue with Ezra then. Yes. Yes. Uh, Yes, I'm Ezra Odieno. I'm standing in for uh, Leah, who just had an emergency and couldn't attend uh, the session today. And uh, I'll just speak on uh, uh, the, the ecological justice um, uh, uh, in Kenya, which most of my comrades have already spoken about. Uh, we, I am a member of the Central Committee of the RSL. I'll just piggyback on what they had said, um, um, just to add on what they have said, because most of the things they have said in, uh, is actually what we do. And uh, I'll just give a, um, um, a picture of what happens in Kenya uh, in regards to imperialism and eco, uh, uh, ecological justice. So, uh, you know, uh, ecological justice in Kenya is a, is a collective community. Uh, you know, as RSL in particular, we have ecological justice groups in Nairobi. I think Okaka talks about this in, in Western part of Kenya. We organize in, you know, in a number of ways, mainly in political education. It's uh, uh, because we think it's important that people understand uh, 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 the global economic and political systems and its impact to the people. The ecological crisis, you know, is a direct, uh, consequence of the global hegemony of capitalism um, uh, and imperialism. Through the climate triggered emergencies, there are glaring crimes of capitalism against nature and humanity as part of nature. So, through the study cells and community resource centers, you know, we have, have access to progressive literature and films which we give to comrades to try and, uh, uh, and go through as a way of learning what really goes on, you know. And uh, through this, they are able to join the ecological justice movement and participate in activities that might affect change in the society. 
you know, they this help people to connect the, you know, the, the, the environmental apartheid and to the general militarization of the country and the region, in the regions. You know, we organize, uh, you know, young eco warriors. I think McLara had talked about that, you know, and we even have children groups who are groomed to understand and make interventions to mitigate the, the immediate impacts of ecological crisis and grow up ecologically into conscious people. Uh, most children spend a lot of time in school, so we support them hand, to have green spaces in schools to help uh, pollution, since most of the schools in urban areas are situated in heavily populated areas. So McLara, uh, Joyce, Comrade Joyce had talked about uh, uh, you know uh, the things they are doing in Dandora and uh, Korogosho, and uh, just last week, two weeks ago, I was there, and they formed this Korogosho Ecological Justice Collective, uh, whereby different groups, I think twelve of them, came came up with a, a collective, and they resolved to do this ecological justice work that we're talking about, and with this, they uh, they were to incorporate this with the political education that RSL does. You know, uh, in addition to this, we also have art for liberation. Uh, there are a number of artists, you know, in in the ecological justice movement who use art to sensitize people on the importance of protecting the ecosystem through, you know, spoken word. You know, graffiti artists, Comrade Okaka maybe knows most of them. Uh, you know, landscaping. Some of them are acrobats and other forms of sports. You know, this help in mobilizing and educating the people. Uh, we are striving towards having people understand that humans are part of nature, that we have an obligation to change our production and consumption models that have people entirely unsustainable. You know, uh, we want to see the climate justice conversation coming from the bottom up and interventions having happening from within the communities. You know, we need to get the people to understand the climate crisis can only be resolved by a systemic shift, not a regime change. And that's the basis of the political education that uh, that uh, that RSL stands for. We, we want systemic change under capitalism, you know, uh, from the grass, from the root in itself. There, there cannot be ecological change under capitalism. We, we, we believe that only a systemic shift can change and bring ecological justice. You know, the, the products of nature are public goods and, and, and that should be accessible to everyone who believe that. It's our obligation as part of nature to be good custodians of natural resources for future generations. You know, uh, you know uh, speaking about the state of ecological crisis in Kenya, East Africa, Central Africa and Africa as a whole, uh, you know, it's worsening and, and people are being further alienated from uh, nature and its projects. We are getting more and more pauperized to the extent that we are barely accessing basic necessities, like land, for example, which is the main means of production, water, food, you know, decent housing, green spaces are being taken over by private organizations. For example, in Nairobi, the biggest green uh, space called Uhuru Park was closed uh, six months ago for renovation. And, uh, you know, people will have to pay to access a space like that. You know, there are things that are, uh, nature provides for free, yet they are being privatized day by day. Uh, people use natural things like light and water as bargaining chip to get to people, you know, uh, and pay more for, you know, bare minimum, like housing. There are more punitive agricultural role, laws for sorry being passed, particularly seed laws. Comrade Okaka had talked about this. You know, uh, they're very retrogressive and repressive to the people. Uh, they, they, these laws actually criminalize smallholder farmers and make them dependent on corporations. Um, a lot of harmful synthetic fertilizers are the, are the main fertilizers that farmers use. And you know, carcinogenic. Uh, uh, they are carcinogenic, you know, and they destroy the ecological system that uh, that is still dumped on the Kenyan market. Uh, and uh, there's a law that is being considered 
that they want to legalize GMOs. This is very sad and we uh, there's a, there's a, we are in collaboration with a group called the Kenya Peasants League that are really taking this up and they are mobilizing people to stand up against these laws uh, and try and change it because there's an attack on green spaces. More parks, riparian land and community spaces are being seized up to open up concrete uh, uh, jungle like Huru Park as, as I just said. Uh, there's also an obsession of graying the country and the region at large at the expense of ecological systems. Public green spaces are being militarized through fencing, military and police presence. You know, people are being charged to access them. There are the conservancies, you know, and mushrooming, taking up large chunks of community land in the guise of conserving wildlife and taking care of endangered species. As a result, communities have been displaced, evicted, and lives have been lost in the conflicts that have escalated in those areas. Uh, so, uh, uh, Comrade Okaka talked about mining industries because their corporations are mining unethically, leaving land damaged, you know, death, and even making children vulnerable thanks to the ecological, uh, uh, thanks to the unethical extractive practices. Uh, communities are subjected to danger of quarry mines, you know, and toxic, toxic wastes like uh, Comrade Joyce had talked about, uh, uh, Dandora, where, you know, medical waste, which is very toxic, is dumped there, where people live. It's a residential area, they're dumping toxic waste there. So, you know, uh, uh, below survival wages, at, you know, very inhumane working conditions and health risks that come with it. Uh, Comrade Joyce had talked about people in around Dandora at Korogosho can't live above 40 years old, you know, because of the pollution of the air that they breathe and the factories. It is insatiable, you know, the appetite for fossil fuels is sweeping across the region, of course, just like uh, it's happening in other places. Uh, despite the international claims contrary, you know, foreign banks are also pouring investments into oil and coal projects, you know. Uh, there's a pro proposed in Kenya, for example, the coal plant is, that is supposed to be put up in Lamu. They, we have oil in a place called Trukana. And uh, these are some of the things that are very contentious. That, uh, these uh, very large multinational corporations have very huge interests in them. And this is at the expense of the ecological uh, justice that we are talking about. Uh, 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 there have been a series of calamities uh, that we've witnessed uh, as an effect of climate change. For example, uh, Lake Victoria is rising. Uh, personally, I come from there. And for example, the shores are really, really expanded that you can see houses inside the lake. Lake Naivasha and Lake Nakuru also flooding Lake Barigo. People, children can't go to school because the lakes have, uh, have broken their banks and they are just overflowing everywhere. Um, uh, the, there's a looming drought in Northern Kenya, for example, uh, and uh, people are trying to recover from the recent locust invasion. And uh, we can't say, speak more to that, but we suspect that there can be another wave of locust invasion. This is as a effect if, of these climate calamities that are being meted upon the people. Uh, the attack on green, green spaces is worsening, as uh, we had talked about this before. Um, uh, but, you know, it, this is worsening you know, even the state of the mental health of the people. And people have limited spaces to unwind. And uh, people, you know, they can't meet up and uh, uh, they can't meet up in places because they have been locked down by the government. So it's up to us as, uh, uh, as the revolutionary people in Kenya, for example, we call upon movements to take up the charge because if we can't do it, then who will? It's our chance to take up spaces and uh, uh, 
global form global alliances especially in the the, the, the global south because uh, you know uh, environmental justice movements have become transnational uh, inter- interaction between level levels of activity you know from local proximities to global arenas uh, is used by activists to gain you know wider wider uh, wider view of the people so we can come together and have as the ISL can have the ecological wing and have campaigns that uh, you know we can we can have for example hazardous west we can have a huge campaign that because this is a huge platform for everyone across the world and i know this crisis is a global crisis not a regional crisis also we can join hands uh, and uh, fight against this thing uh, together because uh, we can't have them uh, as socialism says socialism is an international thing we can't fight ecological justice wars locally this has to be a global fight for everybody you know uh, uh just uh one point that i've taken up sorry uh for the late preparation uh, the global south uh, environment you know the history that we need to understand also is something that i've forgotten uh you know the academic uh, public understanding of this environmental issue vis-a-vis the political angle of it the cultural values of it because uh, uh, we have some very ethnic for example in kenya communities that still live in the forest uh and how do they relate with the environment for that matter and how that how does the deforestation affect them because th- there are people who interact with nature you know as their livelihood every day so we need to understand this you know uh and bring them together and liaise with them you know for, you know because the the global south consists of many poor countries and the emissions of uh, of of this ca- carbon uh carbon is mainly from the northern country so we are the ones who are suffering for things that we actually least take part in them so uh you know uh, we need strategic alliances you know and uh, transnational advocates uh, concerned with these issues and uh, we need political education for everyone because without this we are doing nothing this goes hand in hand with what we are preaching uh, we are preaching as uh, as as socialists also and with that i think i have done i'm done with my submissions thank you okay gracias esra uh, thank you esra algunas preguntas we're going to wanted to tell you some of the questions, four of them. Well, the first is if you can tell us about the struggles of the ecological struggles in your region. The second one is if you can tell us a bit more about the educational system in Kenya. The third is if you can tell us which are the demands or claims that you that you are making to the government of Kenya and what are the proposals of the Revolutionary Socialist League. And the last question is how does the uh, ecological justice system work? are some of the social environmental revolts and strikes that have taken place in Kenya and other parts of the region. Second, how does the education system work in Kenya? If you could please tell us more about that. 
Third, which are your demands towards the Kenyan government and which are your uh, proposals from the Revolutionary Socialist League um, regarding the issues that you have already mentioned? And fourth, how does this group ecologic justice work? Aclaro que eh, elegimos algunas preguntas porque por razones de tiempo no, no, no podemos responder. We picked some of the questions because of all that were made because uh, we are quite running out of time for this panel. Conrad. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, I'll answer some of the questions that have been raised and I'll leave some of them to uh, the rest of the panelists. Uh, you know, how does ecological justice work? Uh, you know, ecological justice is part, is a wing of the Revolutionary Socialist League. And, uh, you know, it was just uh, incorporated recently to the, 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 you know, a pillar of, we added it to as a pillar of the Revolutionary Socialist League because we believe that ecological issues and matters are something of importance and we have incorporated it to the, to the political education program that we do have as the RSL. Um, we, ecological justice, you know, as I'd said before, is something that pushes for, uh, uh, it's something that pushes for, uh, you know, conservation of green spaces because we believe that this is a global problem. Uh, it's not something that we're just speaking of here. We believe that it's something that uh, affects everyone. You know, uh, the issue of the dam site that Comrade, uh, uh, and, uh, Comrade Joyce had talked about, the issue of, of multinational companies that Comrade Okaka had talked about, you know, Capitalism is something is a global problem, and we believe that ecological justice is, uh, pro, you know, we, ecological injustice is a problem of capitalism. That's why we want to do this, you know, hand in hand with uh, with uh, our political education classes. You know, you know, uh, that's why we have ecological groups and uh, and uh, community ecological groups in in Nairobi and parts of Western Kenya, especially under the coast. Uh, and we work this through political education. You know, uh, it is important that people understand that uh, the, the global economic and pol political system, you know, and the impact that it has on people. Uh, it's a direct of natural, uh, it's a crisis of uh, natural consequence. You know, the ecological crisis is a direct and natural consequence of global hegemony of capitalism and imperialism I had I'd said before. So uh, another question was, uh, what are the demands that we had for, we have from the government? Uh, number one, you know, uh, we be demand that the people be al allowed to access the green spaces that, uh, that they have been taken over and been privatized. We demand that uh, the multinational corporations like Monsanto, as, as, as uh, Bayer, like Comrade Okaka had talked about, be, you know, not be given the, the power that they have to control fertilizers and seeds that are very uh, synthetic and uh, poison the food that people consume. You know, uh, we demand that the laws that they want to change to, uh, to, to legalize GMO be thrown out. And this is something that we will even demonstrate and uh, picket uh, with, in conjunction with other organizations here in Kenya, like the Kenya Peasants League, to be able to, to overturn this law that the government, that dra draconian law that the government wants to put across. Uh, well, one comrade had asked about uh, what, how does the education system, or how is the education system in Kenya? The education system in Kenya is very uh, retrogressive given the colonial, it's colonial education because we have inherited a system 
that we were left by the British. It's the same, actually, the same way the British are being taught. It's, it's not a system that encourages uh, creativity and critical thinking, but it's a system that encourages competition. And it's like a pyramid scheme because the people who can cram the best are the people who are considered as, like the best students. So uh, this cannot allow people to think critically this type of education because even the history that the, the, the students are being taught is a, is a very retrogressive history, is a history uh, that is very false. And even when people are talking about the environment, uh, there is no part of the curriculum that talks about environmental conservation. It's very minimal or, uh, or nothing. It really emphasizes on some things like uh, uh, religion and stuff like that, you know, things that are very uh, backward, if I may say, uh, I stand corrected. Uh, I'll hand over the rest of the questions to uh, Comrade Okaka and uh, Joyce. Sí, uh, una aclaración antes. Eh, a la compañía Joyce la, la perdimos por, por razones... Just one uh, clarification, comrade Joyce, we uh, lost her for technical reasons. She's not on the call, so we'll... Okay. One more thing. Um, unfortunately, we did lose uh, Joyce due to technical difficulties. We were not able to reconnect. So now um, the comrade Okaka can go ahead. Okay, hello guys, uh, once again, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yes, we can. Oh, okay, thank you, thank you, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, I'd love to tackle the question around uh, the kind of campaigns that we've had uh, in terms of mitigating uh, climate change. So um, the campaigns that we've been running with is that uh, we've been uh, pushing for public interest litigation around issues that uh, affect us for example the the issues around uh, the dump site that that we've been told and uh, so uh, we've we've been able to get some few successes where for example the, the government was able to, to 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 give a directive for for the city council the Nairobi city council to actually uh, move the the dump site uh, to uh, to relocate the dam site to uh, a landfill that uh, that's supposed to be very far from the residential areas where where some of the low income uh, wage earners live. So I'd say that has been uh, one of the avenues that we're trying to seek. Uh, aside from that, uh, we've been having also uh, uh, social media campaigns around some of these adversities, uh, some of these uh, exp uh, uh, exploitation that takes place, uh, for example, with the mining industries. Uh, we understand that Exxon is still uh, with us here, mining uh, fuel in uh, parts of uh, Northern Kenya, uh, the way Ezra has been telling you. And uh, uh, they're not only involved uh, by themselves, there also exist another a state corporation and the, the name uh, China State Corporation, also doing some uh, development works and also mining for the same oil uh, that, that was discovered in Northern Kenya. So what they did is that uh, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of exploitation of the workers and uh, they protested at a particular time that was last year at around uh, September. So what we did is that uh, we offered solidarity with the comrades in uh, Turkana, who are uh, actually far from us, uh, around 800 kilometers away. And uh, we, we called on to the government to actually uh, seek and, and look into the issues of these, of these, uh, of these workers because uh, they were being arrested and uh, a bit, uh, they were being bitterly arrested, they were being brutalized, and uh, the government uh, was not actually looking into trying and resolve the situation because what, the, what, what actually happened is uh, when the workers uh, asked the government to come and actually solve the situation. Uh, what they did is that they arrested, they arrested some of the uh, some of the the workers, 
and uh, and actually uh, trumped uh, up the, the charges that the, they were actually kind of uh, misleading workers and they were starting revolts that uh, was not part of the uh, regulated to the, uh, I'd say labor laws that that, that, uh, in, in some... So what we what we did is that uh, we had some hashtags around the same. It was a killer hashtag killer China state to kind and and see and see China state. Aside from that, comrade, uh, comrade, we can't. We, when you move forward, we can't hear you. seek to salvage the only public space there is in such as uh, the, the 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 parks that we enjoy in our cities is that it, it's uh, it's the only spot where we find uh, uh, a low uh, uh, low wage workers can actually go and rest to without uh, having to uh, chilling on the grass and and uh, and cooling yourself off uh, before you go back you go back home or you want to enjoy the family and stuff like that. So what happened is that uh, the government had partnered, I, I think, with some of these international monetary organizations, and they were hoping to build a road that was going uh, straight from the airport and the highway was, uh, was expected to end up in Gigiri in some of the high-end uh, embassies and government uh, parasitical buildings uh, in Gigiri. So it it was essentially a road for the rich because uh, this road being built uh, was only going to be paid in in ways that uh, was not going to benefit uh, the local the the local local citizens. So we had we had a campaign on uh, hashtag uh, hands off Uhuru Park, and uh, believe some of the procession can actually get to see them and uh, and and those. Uh, we also had a, a three-year campaign on uh, something called Njare, hashtag Nja Revolution. Nja is a Swahili word for, for hunger, which is a hunger revolution, if you were to uh, kind of uh, uh, translate it to English. So with the Nja Revolution, we've been trying to kind of hold the government to task to actually Uphold uh, 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 what, what uh, is constitutionally ours under the Article 43, which uh, which uh, speaks for uh, uh, food security for all citizens, which also pushes for good uh, hospital uh, conditions, uh, uh, free education, uh, equitable, safe, and fresh water, and also seeks for social security for for for, for all citizens. And uh, what we've seen is that uh, the campaign has been has been building up uh, over time, and more. And, and more people are actually joining in in uh, on the on the campaign because uh, as 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 the crisis around capitalism continue to accumulate, you also see people being disillusioned and actually angry that uh, the essential services that are supposed to be provided by the government uh, are not being articulated. Aside from that, we also have been having our own hands on way of uh, fighting climate change. And that's the, the, through the use of bamboo. So we've been taking action in terms of planting bamboos because we understand it has it has it has special root systems that are able to actually siphon the the the, the bad minerals uh, along the rivers that are being deposited by some of these industries and the and the poly, and the pollutants that are being exp uh, uh, that are being uh, imported from uh, from Europe and USA. Uh, into 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 its stems, and also aside from that, bamboo is the fastest growing, uh, uh, I'd say tree, but it's actually a grass. It's the fastest growing plant in the world. And that being said, it, it, it is that uh, it is a hardwood, and being a hardwood and a, a fibrous plant, it has more than ten thousand uses. So we we're looking forward to having a a, a, a bamboo revolution where we can actually. Uh, uh, get uh, sustainable homes built uh, by the use of bamboo. We can also have uh, articulate issues around environmental degradation because uh, in, in two years, places that uh, have experienced uh, a lot of expansion due to either mining or uh, tree, tree, tree cutting. 
bamboo can able to, uh, is able to restore the the, the land to uh, 70 percent uh, its previous uh, its previous condition so aside from that we see bamboo also replacing some of the some of the tools that are used uh, in, in construction like uh, glass uh, plastic uh, metal uh, because because of its uh, of its uh, uh, it, its hard nature and its tensile strength, since it, it's very flexible and you can actually kind of uh, mold it to fit uh, or suit any particular thing that you'd like to, you'd like to kind of uh, construct. Uh, it, it can also be used as food since uh, some of its, uh, some of its, uh, uh, how are they called? The shoots, the bamboo shoots, uh, some bamboo shoots are edible. So, it, it's all, it can all be also be a route to uh, food sovereignty, and uh, there are many more. There are many more other uses and uh, ben benefits that come with using bamboo. So also on Twitter, you can also go and hashtag, uh, look at the hashtag bamboo revolution and see some of the activities that we are, we are doing in the community in terms of educating them to uh, kind of embrace this plant. Since uh, the the capitalist world is not even is not. Is, is not even uh, kind of seeking to embrace this plant. They they call it uh, they call it the poor man's timber. So there's a lot of stereotype uh, stereotype in in terms of uh, embracing this plant because uh, the cap the capitalist nature uh, as it exists uh, is not able to actually kind of exploit this uh, this plant to its benefit because it benefits the community. It grows. It, it grows in a, a, as a shoot, so meaning, uh, and it has a, a, a very short uh, a growth span of uh, 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 for four years. When you, as compared to most of the trees, like the ones we have here that are being also imported from abroad, like the acacia. No, not the acacia. The a moment, sorry, I had a call. So. so most of the trees that uh, we, we see, like the oak trees, uh, take like uh, 80 years to actually mature. But for the bamboo, it's only four years. So you can see the kind of transformation that the, uh, the bamboo creates is the best route to actually tackling climate change. And uh, some, those are some of the campaigns that uh, we, we try to run in our communities in terms of mitigating climate change. Uh, any other questions, I'd be happy to respond. Thank you.